All right, what's good, everyone? Trey with Kick Genius and KicksOnCourt.com. Today we have a performance test on the Nike Hybrid Dunk 2012. Pretty much at the end of its life cycle. You know, we got the 2013s dropping pretty soon, but uh, we we like got a lot of requests for this shoe, so we figured why not. Side note, you know, I asked a lot of you guys what you thought my vertical was. Average response was about 34, 35 inches. Got the Nike Plus going, so we're gonna see how close you guys were with that. Other than that, hope you guys enjoy. So back in the studio for my final thoughts over the Hyper Dunk 2012. And I'm pretty sure by now everybody has this shoe, whether you know you got it for your team in high school or you got it just to play in the park or whatever the case may be. What I've come to realize about the Hyper Dunk series, it's always that happy medium between all the performance shoes on the market at the time. It has this really nice versatile balance about it, especially this one. For example, the LeBron 10 has probably one of the most plush cushioning setups of all the shoes right now with the 360 Air Max unit. The Hyper Dunk 2012 is not that cushioned, but it's also not as uncushioned as the uh, D-Rose 3 with the EVA midsole. The targeted Luna Lawn on this shoe is gonna offer you that happy, comfortable medium. We have Fuse taking care of the upper of the shoe, which may not be as comfortable as the engineered mesh on the Kobe 8, but it's still gonna give you a, a nice balance of lightweight support. The traction setup is great. You have big, wide, multi-directional grooves, which provide really nice grip. The only traction that comes to mind that's better than this is the CP3.6, which it only beats it in the coverage category. As far as you know, lateral movements, front to back, you really can't ask for more. I, I had absolutely no problems with this traction. We can touch on the exposed fly wire right here, which gives you a nice midfoot lockdown. Heel lockdown was also in effect with the shoe, felt really secure. Both of these features are gonna add to your support system, which along with the glass-based carbon fiber plate, you really have a, an overall lightweight supportive shoe. They fit true to size, run a little narrow. So overall, the Hyper Dunk 2012, my thing is you really can't go wrong with this shoe. If Nike continues to improve upon last year's model, then Nike will continue to put out the most, one of the most versatile shoes on the market. And you guys know I like to touch on design, so as far as that goes, these honestly look better than the KD5s. I know the KDs have a name attached to them, which some people can't separate, but if we're talking strictly design, then yeah, out of those two, the Hyper Dunks take the crown. The KDs do have better colorways, but that's about it. Just think, if the Hyper Dunk was the KD5 and the KD5 was the Hyper Dunk, if you can switch those two and put the name on this shoe, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, man, definitely a dope shoe. Really looking forward to the 2013s. If you have the 2012s, let me know what you think of them as far as, you know, compared to the other kicks you hoop in. Now, I do have a couple announcements. Our next Q&A, we'll be showing you what we do for ball handling drills. We won't just be, you know, answering you. We'll be showing you drills, et cetera, et cetera. Also, in about two weeks, maybe a week and a half, expect a really nice three-in-one performance test over the Nike Basketball Elite Series. Really can't wait for that one. Hopefully, we'll have some really nice production for the video. And as far as the workouts, they will be harder. You saw today, well, in the footage with the Hyper Dunks, it's kind of a light day. Really had no reason to really, you know, push them to the limit. I've been hooping in them, and I don't know how long, but um, in the Elite Series, you can guarantee, you know, we'll push those to the limit to see how they perform. And just a few, you know, random miscellaneous things that people keep asking. I'm 21, 6 foot, Jay Jones is 19, 5'8". So yeah, that pretty much wraps everything up. It's Trey from Geek Genius. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'm out.